G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for our weekly update on our game day squad competition. Remember, if you haven't joined in the game day squad fun yet, you still can. It's not too late. What we're talking about here is an online fantasy game as an alternative to, you know, fantasy and super coach that have really gotten around this year and we started a True Footy competition. So you can join all the fun by clicking the top link in the description below, making a team. It's never too late in the season because what you do now will carry on into next year. It's a dynasty league. If you snare a gold Nick Day cost, you carry that into next year and you can start building your team now. So get around it. We're going to follow the usual format today, talk about how everyone's going in the league. We're going to go through my team, what I got right, what I got wrong, make some changes, and of course, going to unpack some more players for you as well. I've got some bronze packs to open, as well as a three-player common pack to open as well, which is a lot of fun. It's always my favorite part of every video. So we'll review how everyone's going in the league. We've still got Peanut Butters dominating the competition in first place in the classic competition, and that's the season. He's on nearly uh, 50,000, uh, which is incredible. We do have a league of 142 guys. Let's bump that up to 150 if we can. Uh, let's look at the non-salary cap competition. This is called Champion. And uh, we've got Mato's Magicians with 54,000 points. So Peanut Butter's there in second. He's under the salary cap, which is the difference between Classic and Champion. And he's still second in the Champion League. So well done, Peanut Butters. While we're in the Champion competition, we'll look to see who the winner was this round. And it was somebody called Mato's Magician. Surprise, surprise. So the guy who's winning the league had the most points this week. So well done, Mato. And then if you go back to the Classic competition in round 21, all the way, oh, that's right. We shouted out all the way in the Just the Tips video. Uh, fantastic effort. Plaps won it last week. He came second this week. Very, very impressive stuff. I myself scored 2,011 points. Uh, I'm still getting the hang of this game and improving my squad over the course of the year. Anything over 2,000, I'm happy with. So that's not a bad score for me. Let's scroll down and have a look at how my team did. And we'll go through it line by line. So my defenders were a bit of a mixed bag this week. Obviously, I've got a platinum Dan Houston there. He's having a great year. Uh, scored just the 70 this week with just the nine disposals. I'll need to check if he's injured. I've got a feeling he is. Let's have a look. Nope, according to my research, he was not injured in this game. Uh, Trent McKenzie was listed as the only injury for Port Adelaide. So he just had a quiet game, which is good to know if he's going to play this week. Nick Dacos definitely did get injured. He scored just the 45, which is still pretty good going. I think he only had like five touches. How did he do that? Oh, he got a goal. That's why. Yep. So I'm definitely going to have to replace Nick Dacos this week. We will do that after we unpack um, the new cards that I have. Nick Newman is having a fantastic year. Really underrated player at Carlton. I've got him in silver and 185 or 186 here is monstrous. That's his best score of the year and a really, really elite number. Uh, Luke Ryan was a little disappointing, but 94, I'm not going to complain about that. Not too bad. James Sicily was monstrous once again. He has been a fantastic pickup in silver for me, scoring 204 points, his second best score of the year. That's crazy. Uh, 37 possessions, 19 marks. So he's obviously racked it up there for me. And uh, Liam Duggan had a good game with 132. Tom's Stewart's been great on my bench. I will have to contemplate whether I swap him for Dacos, uh, but I guess it depends who I unpack in my team as well. Moving down to the midfielders, um, I forgot that Took Miller got suspended for um, grabbing Schlong. So uh, he should be back this week, and it doesn't matter because Lockie Neal was on my bench and scored 120. So that's not too bad. Whitfield was a little bit quiet, uh, as was Raul, to be honest, but uh, Trelaw um, kept up the faith and scored 122 for me. Happy with that. The Rucks, again, were fantastic. Tim English, 147. Uh, it's nice that the higher scorer was on the field this time. It feels like every time I have Marshall on the field, English scores better and then vice versa. But uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Forward line was surprisingly good. Tim Taranto is 126. I'm happy with. It's below average, but that's all right. It's a good score. Errol Goulden, again, 198. Um, he's having an unbelievable year. Absolute lock for all Australian. 206 a week before, another 208. He's just unbelievably consistent uh, with 32 possessions in this game. Connor Rosie was also large. He's having a great year for me. 151. Um, he's been consistently around that 140 plus mark. Nick Martin, he's been a mixed bag this year uh, with just the 59, uh, some really high scores and some quiet ones as well. Um, but as you would know, if you've been following this, this uh, team that I've got going, my forward line has consistently underproduced and so he may get a game, but we'll see. I think I've got at least four, one forward pack to open. Windhager, I've kind of rolled the dice on him because he's been improving his scores lately. Um, as you can see here, this glut of five games where he turned up, 85's on the quiet end. So I'll consider whether Windhager makes the cut for this upcoming week, but it's time to open some cards. So we're in a really good position with these cards. I've got five midfielder cards. I've got one defender, one forward, finally. It feels like a while since I've been given one uh, forward. I've got two rucks, which I don't really need. And then we're gonna have uh, a player pack here of uh, the common packs, which I will reveal shortly. So we're looking at 
12 new players in one hit. So that's actually a really big week. So let's open up my midfielder packs. So these guys are going to be bronze. Uh, the first one is Ed Allen. Already had him swing and a miss. Second player is Callan Ward. Third player here in the midfield position is Tom Green. Now that is juicy. Uh, certainly a good long-term one. I'm not too sure what he's averaging right now, but we will review that at the end of all the unpacking. Two midfielders to go. Who have we got? The next one is Jared Berry. Yeah, he's not a great stat player, but that's all right. Keep going. One more midfielder. Finally, uh, Jai Simpkin. Okay, so we'll review that. I've got a pretty strong midfielder already, particularly with bronze players um, but, and, and silvers as well. So he might not crack it, but it's good to have him uh, on the bench, I guess. We'll open up a defender. Again, I've got a pretty strong back line, so uh, I'm not sure if I'll get anything juicy out of this, but you never know. And this one is... Sam Taylor, bloody good player. Not Probably not a great fantasy player, but bloody good player. The forward is the one I'm really, really hoping we get a good player. Please make this worthwhile. Maybe or Chol, probably not going to crack my team. Unlucky. Well, I'll open up the two rucks for argument's sake, obviously. I'm not going to let two free packs just sit there. Uh, but between English and Marshall, it doesn't really get much better than that. Uh, Sean Darcy, actually, that's, that's a pretty good shout. We'll review who's actually averaging more. I'll be surprised if Sean Darcy's averaging more. He's injured at the moment. I'm aware of that. But uh, obviously, this is a longer-term thing. And the second ruckman is... Scott Lysett. Yeah, probably uh, not going to be using Scotty too much. Cool. So now we've got our three-player common pack. These guys won't be bronze. They're going to be silver or better. Um, I would love a forward. That's really what I'm crying out for at this stage. Here we go. The dopamine is building. Three players. All right. Fingers crossed, guys. Tim O'Brien. Silver defender. I presume that's the defender. Um, gross. Who else we got? Max Lynch in gold. Damn. All right. Fingers crossed, guys. Please give me a good forward. Brody Kemp, a eh, decent longer term option maybe. Obviously he's still fighting his way into that Carlton side. So not too much from my uh, my common pack there. Let's go back and review if any of these guys are gonna crack my team. So when you go to your side here, if you scroll down, you get all the players that are not currently in your team and they're ordered by how rare they are. So I know that we got uh, two golds and a silver there and the rest were bronze. So we'll start at uh, the golds. Max Lynch, his average is 20 and he was uh, he got concussed, didn't he? Brody Kemp actually had a pretty good game. That is gold though and he will cost more in salary cap, but potentially, um, actually he spent a lot more time in the side than I had realized previously. Maybe a longer term one, but as a gold defender, he's probably not gonna crack my team. When's Clayton Oliver coming back? I seriously need a Clary coming back into the side. As you can see, you can also see, you know, which players scored well that weren't in my team. And Hayden Young had an enormous game for Fremantle this week, just as an aside here, 153. So maybe a solution to that Nick Dacos replacement. I'm probably not even going to bother looking at uh, Tim O'Brien and, um, you know, whoever the hell it was I, I got in that pack. But we can see the bronze players are unpacked here. Um, Marby or Chol, obviously not in the side at the moment. Again, we knew that was going to happen. Uh, Sean Darcy, you know, pre-injury was averaging around the 100 mark. Uh, the average probably brought down by that injury as well. Uh, but, yeah, probably a good one to have. It's nice to have the choice of English uh, Marshall and Sean Darcy in my team. So, you know, adds to the depth. Jai Simkin actually had a pretty good game, 124. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good score. But, look, uh, he's been a mixed bag as well. Not a strong fantasy player. Uh, Callum Ward had a pretty good game. I thought I already had Callum Ward. But, yeah, a real outlier there. But I'm not going to put him in the team based on one game. Same with Jared Berry here, 133. Um, that's a big improvement on previous games. Tom Green. I forgot I had Tom Green. There you go. No, he is averaging really well. 158 last week. His average is 125. He might crack a game for me this week. So what we're going to do now is just see if I can improve my team um, just by making changes. So the conundrum I have here is Nick Dacos um, is bronze and I've got to get him out of the team. I've got to replace him with Hayden Young, who is silver. That is my plan. But to do that, I need to drop salary cap elsewhere. It's probably not going to be Took Miller. He should be back into the side. I'm looking at my forward line now. And can I justifiably drop Wind Hager for someone uh, that is going to cost less in salary cap? I reckon I can. I think I saw Horn Francis down here had a pretty good game for Port. Um, where was he? 115. So is there anyone else that is outperforming that? Zach Fisher, 132. That's right. Uh, oh, I didn't actually mean to do that. I'll keep an eye on Zach Fisher because, um, yeah, 132 is a good score, but we'll see. He's obviously still fighting for his spot in the list, let alone... Um, you know, his spot on the side. So Jason Horn francis 
comes into my side, I reckon that would be the change. As you can see there, you know, Horn France is actually averaging more and he's not in gold. I, I rolled the dice with uh, Windhager and it's time to take back that risk, so to speak. Maybe in a couple of weeks, Zach Fisher could overtake Nick Martin in my side, but again, probably not. So that means I can scroll up here and I can get young Nick Dacos out of my side. He's, he's out for about six weeks, I think. And uh, we'll just review if there's any other better options. Zerk Thatcher had a good game, but he is platinum there. Caleb Daniel in gold. Um, I could afford him now. I could afford Caleb Daniel, or I could go Hayden Young. I think I'm actually going to go Hayden Young. Let's get him in the side. So I've still got a bit of salary cap here, which means I can upgrade one player from silver to gold. Um, is there any viable options there? Let's have a look down here. Look, the answer is probably not. It would be the midfield, if anything, that I did upgrade. You know, the backs and the forwards are there are pretty well boosted, and Took Miller's going to play this week. So if I had a really good silver midfielder here, like a, a silver Neil or silver Trelaw, that would be the change I'd make. But uh, I think I'm going to just underspend this week and um, carry a little bit of salary, salary cap into next week. And hopefully we see Clayton Oliver sooner rather than later because then uh, getting him back inside will be more simple. But anyway, guys, that is my team and uh, how they're going. I think I'm pretty happy with the way it's going this year. I think I'm like 10th overall in the competition, but it'd be great to have you join up. And then, uh, you know, it carries into next year and we can have a really strong competition next year the sooner you guys get started in this competition. As always, guys, I appreciate you supporting the channel and appreciate you playing this game. Hope you're enjoying it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.